Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Golgari Life Drain. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. Before we jump into today's amazing deck, brought to you by MTG Malone, I do want to remind you, yesterday we had our very first guest slot taken up by the amazing Cairo MTG. If you didn't get a chance to look at that, basically what we're doing is allowing other content creators to promote themselves on our channel. Now, but they're doing so by, you know, participating in gameplay or doing whatever it is they do in video form on our channel. So they get to, to publish something out to our audience as well. Uh, we're using this as an opportunity for you guys to actually find new creators. Cairo MTG, a little bit smaller than us, but obviously a phenomenal creator and somebody who I highly encourage you guys to go check out. All of his links are in that video. We're going to be doing this every Saturday at noon Eastern time. So if you happen to be a content creator and you would like to take up one of our guest slots, their first come first serve once a week please make sure you get in contact with us. The way you can do that is really DM anywhere. Uh, you can email us it.resolves.mtg at gmail.com or go to our website, itresolvesmtg.com and uh, there's a contact form there in the very top navigation. If you fill that out, just let us know your channel so that way we can check you out, of course. But let's talk about today's deck, guys. Again, brought to you by the amazing MTG Malone. MTG Malone, thank you so much, my friend, for sharing this over on Aetherhub. I know you've actually checked out a couple of our videos recently, which is so flattering. So thank you so much. I'm really happy to have you uh, watching these because um, you're, you're awesome, man. Uh, and I really hope I can do this one justice because this deck is very, very cool. This is kind of a tried and true combo. We've had this around since Strixhaven. So the idea being that you can really, really get the life drain going by sacrificing a lot of the little, like, um, whatever they're called. I can't think of the name. Oh my gosh, I'm blanking. Uh, the 1-1 one, one pest creature tokens. Uh, when you sack those to plumb the forbidden, uh, you actually get to kind of combo off here uh, in draining the opponent, especially if you've got Dina, Soul Steeper, and Witherbloom Apprentice, things like that out. Uh, ideally, the, the, the point is to just drain the opponent for their entire life total. What I have found in practice, I've practiced a few games with this deck, is that generally you kind of drain them over the course of the game more so than you do in one one fell swoop. Regardless though, it's of course a, a very powerful deck and one that I really enjoy. Uh, we've got a lot of difficult to deal with creatures, by that I mean Siegemore Witch, which is obviously going to be the catalyst to creating a lot of these little pest tokens, but it's also a ward cost of three life, which just means that the opponent really has to consider if they want to remove it or not. It does have menace, so it's going to be easily attacking in as well, which is great. We do also have a two of graveyard trespasser, which is sort of a, a not guaranteed two for one. If they have a sweeper, obviously it deals with it, but if they are using one for one removal, it's going to have to be a two for one. Uh, and it already comes down and gets something out of the graveyard. Now, exiling effects in standard are huge right now. I cannot talk about this enough. There are so many opportunities for people to play disc, uh, discarded cards, graveyard uh, focused cards, reanimator, uh, having a way of dealing with those things. Ooh, excuse me, hair in my mouth, uh, is such an important piece of the standard puzzle, in my opinion. So really a, a, a very important piece here and one that obviously we're happy to have. We do have the Shambling Ghast and Eye Twitch with the Deadly Dispute combo as well. That's going to allow us to pull some things from the sideboard. Honestly, Pest Summoning is at an all-time high in this deck. The more little Pest tokens we have, obviously the better. We do have Professor Onyx sitting at the top. A new card is Ga uh, excuse me, Grizzly Sigil, which is kind of an interesting one, but this actually gets the Sacrifice Train going with that Casualty 1. Uh, it does drain for 1, um, and then if, if a creature is dealt non-combat damage, this turn it actually does three and gain three uh you can casualty one to copy it which is great uh, all this to say most of the time this is going to be two damage and two life uh generally speaking at sorcery speed which doesn't seem great but in a deck like this it's actually really good especially for one mana uh, we do have, of course, uh, March of Wretched Sorrow as well. This is just a phenomenal card to, again, 
Drain a little bit, and then of course Meat Hook Massacre is here as well. So lots of interesting stuff here. A lot of the core of the deck is very similar to the one that we saw during Strixhaven Standard, uh, but there's you know some some interesting pieces here that I wanted to give a shot to and try out today. Uh, and again, MTG Malone, thank you so much, my friend, for for sharing this list, guys. Let's jump in. Let's see how it goes. Hopefully, we can have some fun and enjoy a really interesting deck. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. This is honestly a very good start. We have the turn one eye switch. Uh, we also have Plum the Forbidden or Grizzly Sigil, both of which are very good options for us. Uh, let's go ahead and play the eye switch here, of course, and we'll see what happens. Um, we do also have the Wither Bloom Apprentice, which is quite nice. Interesting. Okay. Um, so, I mean, we do have some options here. Um... I think I'm gonna offer up the trade. Uh, their creature is much more high value than ours, so uh, this is basically like a freebie. I'm not going to casualty this, but I am gonna go ahead and shoot this for one before they can really do anything with it. Uh, and then that way, you know, they're not just drawing a crap ton of cards off of the Storm Chaser Drake. That's a very problematic card if we uh, let that stick around. Uh, did not sacrifice the eye twitch here because this is going to be a flyer focused deck So I'd, l I'd rather leave the eye twitch up as a blocker just in case um, And truthfully if the opponent only had that Drake in hand as far as creatures go this This is a relatively creature light deck that the opponent probably is running This could be just a really great opportunity for us to like immediately, you know, kind of force the issue Interesting, okay um, Well we're gonna do the same trick twice uh, and see if they block this time. <laughs> Looks like they will not, which is fine by me. Let's go ahead and throw Dina out here. Um, and I actually will throw the land out tapped. We do kind of want to progress, especially with the Professor Onyx in hand. We're not gonna have a ton in the graveyard, at least not yet. Uh, and so I'd much rather be able to progress our land drops here. Looks like the opponent might be stuck on land, which is pretty nice. The Storm Chaser Drake, of course, will help them dig out of that pretty quickly. So that shouldn't be a huge problem for them. There we go, they got their land. Uh, they are gonna run plenty of protection in this deck, I imagine. All right, let's see. So I think we do this. And I think we just do this. Seems pretty easy. So we are gonna start that life drain process here. Again, these two in tandem really represent quite a bit of damage. Um, the question is, do we think we should go for pest summoning or should we go for the necrotic fumes? I'm actually just gonna go for the pest summoning here. Um, normally I would go for the necrotic fumes, but I really don't think they're going to leave us that opportunity. I think they leave up the one blue for specifically either a fading hope to bounce their own Drake or a, uh, is it slip out the back, the like phasing, phasing out, whatever it might be. Uh, and so having the pest summoning in tandem with our current hand plus plumb the forbidden is very important for us. Um, I think I will go ahead and block here. Uh, while this isn't, you know, any exceptional, you know, block or anything like that, it does keep our life total kind of out of out of range here. And I think we can actually go for the best of both worlds at this point. So that's kind of nice. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we just go for the pest summoning. Again, it's not that that big of a deal at this point. I think if they do anything too crazy it's fine like this seems pretty good uh we do have the hive of the eye tyrant at some point as well which again we already saw that they were playing the uh the homestead courage so i feel like we can probably work our way into dealing with some of their cards that way cool great all right Let's see what they do. They're gonna throw it there. That makes complete sense. Um, yeah, this is kind of fine. I mean, this is a lot of damage, don't get me wrong, but we're still at 20. Like, I mean, we're down to 15 this turn, but like we're gaining quite a bit of life off of our life drain. Um, and we're, we do have Plum the Forbidden to deal with quite a bit here. Uh, yeah. 
All right, so I think what we're gonna do is uh, kind of test the waters a little bit here. So by that, I mean, we are going to try and exile this by sacrificing our own creature. Uh, this is obviously gonna drain for a couple and probably force the issue if they've got a protection spell in hand they're gonna probably use it here. Uh, and if they don't, great. If they've got just a bounce spell, they may try and bounce like the Dina just to save a damage, I don't know. Could be a lot of stuff. I think they would want to save the Drake more so than anything else though. But hey, I've been wrong plenty of times before. <laughs> Also worth noting, I am not going to play this deck very well. Like, this is not a deck that I'm super well versed in. Uh, so if you see something that I just do completely wrong, in particular, MTG Malone, if you see something that I do just completely wrong, just let me know. Um, because chances are I've got a lot of learning to do on this deck for sure. So they're going to phase these out. Okay. Cool. Uh, then I'm just going to attack in for three here. They probably aren't going to want to block. That was an interesting uh, solution to that problem. I don't know that I loved it, but that's fine. Uh, yeah. Again, we're kind of just getting to a position where we can use Plum the Forbidden to, to just sacrifice and do the whole thing. So we do have to keep our life total somewhat in check here because uh, we do lose a life here, but um, we'll be gaining the life also off of the pest tokens, so this isn't like a huge problem. We don't have the Siege More Witch either, which would be really nice because we could replace all of the pest tokens that we're going to lose. Um, but still. All right. Very good. Uh, oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, I'm assuming they're going to phase some things out here. Uh, so what we're going to do is, in response, probably plumb the Forbidden. Um, just to... So my assumption is they have another march. I don't think that's unreasonable to assume. Um... So I kind of want to leave up that mana that in response to basically whatever they do, we can kind of do the thing. Otherwise, I would have just played the Siege More Witch. I think that's a really good play. But Meat Hook Massacre is also not a great play at the moment for pretty obvious reasons. We don't actually deal with the Drake at all. Uh, and most of the time, we're just going to be killing our own stuff. So really, it's a one for one with the Luminarch Aspirant. And then we lose more than we'd gain. Um, I would like to have it out. I guess we could have just thrown it out for zero, uh, which would have been perfectly reasonable. Opponent timing out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Again, I'm really hoping they try and cast something here that we're able to kind of get them. Um, we'll see. They're still here. Um, I'm assuming it's March. Yeah. All right, so in response to the march, we do this. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. Um, I mean, it's not perfect. It didn't like completely solve our problem, but do we just win? Yeah, okay, sick. Heck, yes, we did it. That was amazing. Uh, I'm really glad we saved that for that moment because I think that could have gone south very quickly, but MTG Malone, we did it, man. I hope I'm doing you proud. Let's jump into game two. What's up, guys? Before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you, if you would like to pick up this month's Patreon rewards, feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And yeah, I mean, we can definitely keep this. The question becomes, do we just throw the Agadim's Awakening out uh, turn one to guarantee the turn three land with the Witch? That doesn't seem unlikely to me. I think I'm going to do that. I don't know that that's the right call. Um, someone more experienced with the deck would obviously know, but that's not, that's not, uh, well. And we probably could have gotten away with it if it weren't for those meddling death cap glades. Um, anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead. We'll get Dina out. We'll see what the opponent is up to. 
Interesting. Okay, well, now I'm actually kind of glad because that's a pretty reasonable. All right, so let's attack in. Uh, and I'm just going to play the Siege More Witch here. Uh, again, this is a pretty difficult to deal with threat uh, in terms of, you know, they are going to have to take some life if they want to, to do anything with it. Um, this is obviously quite nice, but uh, next turn, what we're setting up is quite a bit of uh, extra value. At least that's the hope. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. Do get the learn off of this, which is quite nice. Um, I think it's just pest summoning. Let's go ahead and do it again. I don't really see a reason not to. Uh, here, I guess we'll take Necrotic Fumes. So we could offer the two for one. Which isn't unreasonable. Um, yeah, you know what? I am going to offer the two for one. I don't think they go for this. So, yeah, I think... I think that was an easy three damage. The Gallic Readers as well as the Innkeeper are both very important in a deck that it looks like the opponent is running. It's like a Simic Ramp deck. Uh, any opponent may tap an untapped creature they control. If they do, tap it. Okay. I'm gonna decline. This can't attack this turn, so it doesn't matter anyway. Uh, excellence. What's the word cost of two? That doesn't seem that difficult to deal with. <laughs> um, yeah. And we'll just uh, throw away one of these guys. Um, resolve. Auto pick. Perfectly fine. All right. Uh, yeah, that was pretty easy. Um, let's see if they actually block now. I doubt it. Excellent. Um... What's nice is we just kind of replace the 1-1 the one, one that we had before. Okay, cool. Uh, so I actually will tap it this time, mostly because um, we're trying to keep it keep the attacks going in. Um, they obviously do get to gain a life off of this, which is like annoying, but fine. Um, hmm. Mm-hmm. So we've got some options this turn, which is kind of interesting. Um, but I think what we're going to do is start here. All right. Um, let's attack with both of these. I'm going to sacrifice one of these guys. Uh, this is going to drain for one, which isn't a huge deal, but then we get an extra point of damage in as well. I'm going to throw the eye switch out. All right, so we are one land away from a Professor Onyx, which is obviously very good here. We do have the Meat Hook Masker as an available option. Uh, in this case, that may very well be relevant. Um, but we're also just trying to get to a point where, you know, I'm actually going to decline. If they attack with the 6-6, six, six, it's not the end of the world. Um, we've got 21 life here, so that's kind of fine. Um, I'd rather not give them the life gain. Um, I will block, actually. So the reason I'm blocking, uh, we can get a Necrotic Themes off of this, which exiles uh, the Cosmo, this, <laughs> uh, which is really important because it gets around the indestructibility. Um, and so that actually seems very relevant. Yeah. Okay. Um. Let's do this in somewhat of an order. We're going to pay zero here. I know this is kind of silly, but hear me out. We're just setting up. Um, so everything gets minus zero, minus zero. Uh, we're going to target you. We're gonna target you, let's make sure. Yeah, it just gains indestructible. It doesn't gain um, hexproof, so we can actually deal with coma here. And it's exiled, which just means we don't have to deal with it anymore. Uh, yep, seems pretty reasonable.
I think we might need to be attacking in with the pests. If we had the plum, the forbidden, that would be super helpful, but we just don't. Okay, so they're just tapping this to, to do something. That was kind of an interesting play. I don't know that I 100% agree with that. I'm just going to attack with everything. Um, here's my thing. We could still tap this down with our untapped guy. Uh, if they want to double block here, that's great. Like, I'm just going to kill everything. Yep. And then they still take five. <laughs> uh, so, and then they take some more damage because of all this. So we're kind of just getting them in lethal territory at this point. And again, if they, if we get to combat, I don't think we tap these down. I think we just like let them be. I'm gonna decline. They can, they can attack for six, which is, I mean, a good bit, but like we've kind of got enough to deal with it. So yeah, they're not even gonna do it. Um, fascinating. All right, whenever you gain life, each opponent loses that much life. Nice. Um, three, I'm trying to do some math here. Um, she control dies, each opponent loses the life. So that would be six damage. So I think we can just win. Yeah. I think this just wins. Doesn't matter which we keep. I don't know if this wins. I'm not counting correctly, but I think it does. Yeah, okay, so when they all died, yep, we did it. That was it, that was amazing. Uh, heck yes, two wins, guys. Let's see if we can go for three. So far, man, I'm loving this deck. All right, guys, here we are for our third game. Definitely gonna be our last game, unfortunately. Uh, do we like this hand? I don't love that we don't have green, but aside from that, I think I do like this hand quite a bit, so I'm gonna try for it. That's not a bad draw. Uh, that'll give us, if we need it to, a green source uh, off of the treasure token, which will help us cast the Dina. So that seems like a good solid exchange in my opinion. Oh, or we just will naturally draw Dina and then it's not a problem at all. Okay, this is gonna be a very annoying deck. Um, let's do the thing first. Uh, they're not gonna block, of course. Um, but any amount of damage is going to be helpful here. So I do want to get the Dina down and then ideally the Siege more Witch. This is going to be a really scary turn. They're going to throw it here. Okay. Interesting. So I do think we get the Siege more Witch down here. Um and then pass. This is gonna be a bit of a like board progression in the early turns of the game. And then theoretically we might be able to get it later on. This is gonna be a tough matchup though. These are obviously really, I mean, this uh, Bant enchantments list is gonna be very, very difficult for us to deal with. Um, if we get like a meat hook, it'd be great. But the reality is they're already out of range with some of what they've got on the field. So it's not that big of a deal anyway. Wow, wow, very, very good. Okay. Interesting that they uh, decide to go there. That's an 8-8. Eight, eight. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we want to block like this. Um, I'd like to be able to kill the uh, Generous Visitor. Oh no! Oh my gosh. That was such a oops. Oh no. That was such an oops. I meant it. Ugh. I hate that. Ooh, That was really bad. Okay. Um, we do have a way to deal with this. So let's, uh, let's go this route. In a weird way, this actually kind of helped a little. Uh, it's not great, but it's something. Um... Hmm. Everything here is instant speed. Uh, yeah, I think we we just kind of threw. That was definitely a mistake. I meant to minus one on the generous visitor, so it would have killed it, uh, which would have been very helpful <laughs> in this moment. Um, 
because now obviously they just have so much stuff it's ridiculous um yeah yeah <laughs> uh, I'm assuming they're gonna copy yeah oh man that sucks um I mean again good news bad news we do get to kill something if we survive for a turn <laughs> Um, and we do have some life drains, so like there's some opportunity here to, to deal with some stuff, which is pretty good. Interesting attacks. Okay, so we block here. Do we block like this to kill this? Hmm. Let's go into full control just to make sure we do this properly. This is a bit of an ambitious play here. Um, all right, let's do this. All right. Hmm. Mm, could be good. Actually, yeah, that deals with the Weaver. We're down to like nothing though. Um, all right. Dina is keeping us in this game, man. Um, all right. Can we do a little of everything? Yeah, kind of. Uh, so let's do this. I'm just blowing this up because I feel like it's the more crucial thing. I'm gonna casualty this. Sack you. Uh, so we do get to double up and kill this. Uh, which is relevant just because now, you know, obviously we gain some life out of this deal, but we also get rid of a lot of what they're doing. Um, and these are back down to one once. So I, I'm not sold that this was great. Um, we're making the best of a bad situation, I think. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's something. <laughs> Uh, we'll take a black source here. This actually opens up a play for us as well. Um, in particular, the Plum the Forbidden. So what we can do is block something, use this to draw some more cards, and hopefully we hit something important. We'll see. Uh, man, what a game. This has been fascinating. Uh, do we go for this? I'm gonna say no at the moment. Um, as much as I would love to, I don't think we do. All right, so I am gonna throw the Trespasser down here. Uh, we are going to get the Weaver out, I believe. Uh, so this is gonna drain for, again, a couple of damage at the very least, which is great. Um, I think I will go ahead and do this. We're just trying to set up as much defensive action as possible. Um, and then we can kind of take care of the rest from there on. I think we take a Necrotic Fumes just to deal with a thing. <laughs> this is a tricky, tricky game. We really messed ourselves up because we definitely could have done a better job of handling what was on the board. We could have dealt with the Generous Visitor or whatever it is uh, earlier on, which would have, I think, made a pretty big difference. The opponent didn't play anything. Fascinating. Okay. Uh, well. Let's do this. Uh, and we will casualty it. So the question is, do we deal with the Jukai Naturalists? Or do we deal with the Spirited Companions? I'm going to deal with the Spirited Companions. Um, this is actually really good against this like double spirited companion deal because now we get two things off the board which puts both of these at just two twos um which is actually pretty huge uh we can still exile a thing if we would like the question is do we want to um i'm gonna attack here we're gonna exile you and we're gonna exile you so it's gonna drain for another two 
four, excuse me. Uh, now they can double block, but it looks like they're not going to. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and play the Trespasser again. We're gonna exile the other two, which is gonna... All right. I mean, look, I'm not saying we've evened things out for sure, but like we have dealt with quite a bit. I'm glad we've saved the Necrotic Fumes for the Kami because that is definitely something I'm gonna wanna deal with. And they do attack. Um, I don't think I block, I think I take three. Not gonna, not gonna deal with that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and exile this. Okay. Um, hmm. Let's see. I think we just. Do we attack in? I think we do. I mean, I don't see a huge reason not to. Um, yeah, they can block, but like, that's fine. And I am gonna make sure we're draining for as much as we can. I think we're kind of off of the Agadim's Awakening play, mostly because we just don't have the mana to do it anyway. Okay. Uh, if they do double block one, I think what we're gonna do uh, nah, I think we just let that happen. All right. So I do gain some life in that process. That's fine. Okay. This has turned into a really good game. Um, ooh, that's scary. Okay. Are they gonna deal with the graveyard trespasser, or are they gonna deal with Dina? They have to discard a card if they want to deal with the trespasser. Okay, they're just gonna deal with Dina. Uh, that's not good for us. They can obviously attack in and gain some life back, so we kind of need to draw some action. That's not action. I mean, we can just do this. We'll submit zero. This does draw a card, which is semi-helpful. <laughs> March is actually pretty good, so let's do this. Get rid of the naturalist. Gains us some life. Uh, so, depending on what we're trying to kill here, uh, it probably would have been beneficial to to go ahead and kill the naturalist. All right. Uh, submit zero. Let's go ahead and do this. Kind of just want to get this off the field now, um, because that's their life gain, and now they don't have any way to gain life, and they give up. Wow. Oh my gosh, despite so many misplays, I cannot believe, what a game, what a game. Let's talk about this deck. All right, MTG Malone, we went undefeated with your amazing Golgari life drain list. I can't believe it. First and foremost, I just wanna say, I 100% misplayed a lot throughout those games. Even still, MTG Malone's deck building did not let us down. We were able to get three wins back to back. That's pretty amazing. Um, to be honest, I still don't feel like this deck is obviously a tier one deck. I say that obviously. I don't think it's a tier one deck. I think it's very good on best of one for multiple reasons. The life drain mechanic as a whole is just really good when you're dealing with a lot of either aggro-y things or things that sweep. Even in that case, like you're gaining a lot of life out of that process. And so it's kind of okay. Um, a lot of your stuff is creature tokens anyway, so, you know, it's fine, and then there's recursion built in with Agadim's Awakening. So, all in all, I just feel like this deck is super well suited for the best of one ladder. Uh, very grindy, of course, and very, very meticulous with its detail. I think that's part of the, like, the hard part of this deck, is that you really have to know exactly the order in which you want to play certain things, and uh, certainly somebody better than me could could offer a lot more out of that, but uh, I did really enjoy this one guys I can't believe it. That was amazing an undefeated run with Kokari life drain so sick uh, MTG Malone, thank you so much my friend again I'll have his link down below guys go check him out Don't forget to also check out Cairo MTG who put put up a fantastic video yesterday on our channel Cairo, thank you so much man and uh good luck to everybody who decides to join in on the guest slot it'll be great to have you guys so thank you so much i'll see you later